friends this is Kushal from Mysore Bhopal and in this video I am going to explain the concept of back propagation algorithm which is the backbone of artificial neural networks before proceeding further in this video I would suggest you to take a look at our videos on supervised learning and ANN uh, by using the links in the description box below uh, because you know an understanding of ANNs or artificial neural networks is necessary to follow what back propagation algorithm is all about so assuming that you have done that and you have acquired the required background, let's start uh, understanding what the backpropagation algorithm actually does. So we begin with an ANN with an arbitrary number of layers. So here uh, you see a large ANN. Uh, it can have as many layers as you want. Uh, we have chosen the number of input nodes to be N, which is equal to the number of output nodes, but that is not necessary. Uh, so for example if your input nodes are uh, different from the number of output nodes you can just force the required number of nodes to be zero okay so this algorithm that we are going to discuss in this video works in all general cases and there is no specific assumption that is being made about any particular number of layers or number of nodes so now in order to begin understanding the back propagation algorithm we first need to assign some kind of notation so that our mathematical expressions become easy to follow. So first we begin with labeling all the number of layers. So we have capital L number of layers uh, marked from 1, 2 and so on up to L. So the input layer is uh, number 1 and the output layer is number capital L. And in between you have small l minus 1, small l, small l plus 1 and so on. So many uh, layers in our AN and this capital L could be anything that you like it could be it has to be of course you know a minimum of three because you need at least one hidden layer but there is no upper limit to what this capital L could be now after having uh, given a particular label to our layers we now need to give a label to each node so the notation we use is the following which you can see at the bottom of your screen we use a superscript L and subscript J so what this means is that this is the activation or the output of node J in layer L. So for example, if we take the second layer, the nodes would be labeled in this fashion that you see on your screen. So the first node of second layer is labeled A, superscript 2, subscript 1, then A22, then A23 and so on up to A2N. So the superscript of A refers to the layer number and the subscript refers to the node number. So here again you see the number of nodes in the second layer have been taken to be the same as the number of nodes in the input layer but that does not really enforce any restriction on you. So in case the number of nodes are different you could just force the required number of nodes to be zero and that's all. So this ANN that you see is very general and does not have any restrictions of any kind. Now if we take this uh, layer uh, with number L, its nodes are labeled in this fashion that you see on your screen. AL1, AL2, AL3 and so on up to ALN. Similarly the layer L-1 has nodes like this. AL-1 is the superscript and 1 is the subscript. Then AL-1 with subscript 2, then AL-1 with subscript 3 and so on up to AL-1 with subscript N and similarly the node the layer with uh, number capital L-1 has all its nodes labeled in this fashion. So the basic idea that you need to remember is that A represents the output of each node, the superscript refers to the layer number and the subscript refers to the node number. So now after having given a label to the layers and then a label to the nodes, we now need to attach labels to these connections between different nodes. So for example, if we take this particular connection, which is between the second node of L minus 1th layer to the third node of the Lth layer, we will give a notation of W superscript L and subscript 3, 2 to denote the weight of this particular connection. So what does this mean? So the superscript of W refers to the output layer. The first subscript refers to the node number of the output layer 
and the second subscript refers to the node number of the input layer which is always one less than the output layer. So now for example if we take this connection between the n minus 1th node of the l minus 1th layer to the nth node of the lth layer its weight will be written in this fashion with a superscript of l and subscript of n comma n minus 1. So w l uh, subscript n comma n minus 1 represents that the connection is to the lth layer uh, and node n from the previous layer and node n minus 1. So in general we have this uh, weight uh, you know symbols w with uh, superscript l and subscript jk what this means is that this is the weight for the connection to node j of layer l from the node k of layer l minus 1 which is the previous layer. Now having uh, you know given a notation to the layers and the nodes and the weights we now need to see what kind of formula we use to calculate these output values. So now we need an equation which connects all the outputs of the nodes and the weights of the connections between them. So the formula that we have is the following. So A superscript L subscript J is the output of the jth node of the lth layer which is given by some sigma function which is an activation function and inside this function you have summation over all k. So k denotes the uh, uh, k is the index used to denote all the nodes of the previous layer. So a superscript l minus 1 subscript k are the nodes of the previous layer and multiplied by the corresponding weights. So if you take a sum over all of them and then you pass this through an activation function this activation function could be a sigmoid function, it, uh, this could also be a ReLU function or many other kinds of functions which are used in machine learning. Usually uh, in ANNs these days the hidden layers have an activation function of ReLU and the output layer has an activation function of sigmoid. But in specific cases you of course could choose according to your uh, particular problem at hand. So now we have what we have done is that we have taken all the nodes of the previous layer multiplied them with the corresponding weights taken that sum and this sum is given as an argument to the activation function and the output is assigned to the value at jth node of layer l. So what this notation essentially means is that if you take the input layer then xj which means the jth input is denoted by a superscript 1 and subscript j and similarly the jth output which is yj is denoted as a superscript capital L because it is a capital Lth layer and subscript j. So now we have assigned the symbols to the various nodes and the weights and we have also now seen this formula to calculate the output of a given layer by using the output values of the previous layer. So just to understand what this formula means. So suppose if we take this third node of the lth layer since it has only one connection you know as you can see in the graph this third node of the lth layer has only one connection to the previous layer which is from the second node of the l minus 1th layer. So a superscript l subscript 3 will simply be equal to sigma and inside brackets w l 3 2 multiplied by a l minus 1 and subscript 2. Now similarly if we take this node n of layer L that has two connections from uh, n minus 1th node and the n minus 3th node of the previous layer. So that formula will now be a superscript L subscript n is equal to sigma which is our activation function and inside brackets we will have the weight multiplied by the value of the uh, node the output at that particular node. So we have uh, since this nth node of lth layer has connections from two previous nodes. So that's why inside the sigma we have two terms omega l 
n comma n minus 1 uh, multiplied by a l minus 1 and subscript n minus 1 plus w superscript l and subscript n comma n minus 3 multiplied by a superscript l minus 1 and subscript n minus 3. So similarly you can write the formulas for each individual node in this entire ANN and thereby calculate the output at each node by using the outputs at the previous layer and the corresponding weight values. So now that we have uh, you know done this we now need to understand what is it that this ANN does. So the first step in this ANN is what is called forward pass. We know the input values already because it is given to us in the data set. Now by using these weight values we calculate the values of the next layer. So from the input layer we first go to the next layer. So now you may say that from where do we get these weight values? So this whole purpose of back propagation as we will see is to be able to compute these weight matrices or these weight values which gives you the output that you desire. But initially since we do not know the weight values so you can initialize them randomly to some small values to begin with and then we will see how you use the back propagation to update these weight values. So let's say you chose some initial values for the weight values randomly and using that from the input values which are given to us you calculated the values of the second layer. Now using the second layer values then you computed the third layer, fourth layer and so on and then we come to the L minus 1th layer. Then again we keep doing this process till we get to the L minus 1th layer and then finally we get to the output layer. So what did we do? We took the input values from our data set. We initialize this ANN with some random values of the weights and, and using these initialized values we calculated the output values at each node till we reach the output layer. After we reach the output layer we need to compare the obtained output values with the values given in our data set. And using this comparison we calculate what is called the cost function or the loss function. So what is our objective? So for a given data set we need to learn the functional relationship between input and output using this ANN. So now our objective is that after we have computed this cost function or loss function we now need to update the weight values so that this cost function is reduced over each iteration. So first we did this forward pass after obtaining the output we computed the loss function then using this loss function we then updated our weight values we again did another forward pass again got a new output value compared that with our available data set to see whether we have gone closer to the output or not then again we keep updating our weight values till we reach an accuracy which is good enough for us. So uh, once again the objective is to update the weights WL subscript JK in order to reduce the cost function. Of course this cost function cannot be reduced uh, uh, till zero there, will, there is usually always some error but the uh, the more and more you can minimize this uh, you know the cost function or the loss function the better your prediction will be. So now in order to uh, uh, you know reduce the cost function the basic process that we use to update the weight matrices is what is called gradient descent and follows from simple calculus. We will not be getting in, into the details but you can see this equation on your screen. So essentially what you do is that you take the cost function, you compute its derivatives with respect to all the weight values and then your W superscript L subscript JK is equal to its present value minus some eta which is, which is called the learning rate. Uh, this eta multiplied by the partial derivative of the cost function with respect to the weight values. So this gradient descent simply follows from uh, you know basic calculus uh, and I am hoping that you are aware of this. I am not get, uh, going to get into too much details of what the gradient descent means but what is important for you to understand is that this ANN or any ANN follows this very simple procedure to update its 
weights. So now there is also this concept of stochastic gradient descent, which is nothing but gradient descent, but done in a stochastic manner. What that means is that, so usually the definition of the cost function involves all the available points in your data set. So for example, if you have 1000 or 1 million points in your data set, you need to take an average over all those, uh, you know, data points in order to get your uh, you know total cost function however uh, you know uh, doing that computation in each iteration can be very very expensive for if your data set is quite large and if your ANN is also quite large so usually what is done in ANN algorithms is that a batch of input uh, values or a batch of the available data set is taken which is usually much smaller in size than the total data set and this gradient descent is computed over that small data set and the idea is that if the uh, this smaller sample which you have taken has similar statistics as compared to the overall data set you will be basically you will more or less be doing a good job so the idea of gradient descent is uh, you know very very basic or very very simple based on the simple principle of calculus and stochastic gradient descent essentially takes the same gradient descent but instead of computing the cost function over the entire data set, you just do a computation over a smaller subset, which speeds up your computation considerably. So now, but uh, one, uh, you know, challenge with implementing this gradient descent as it is, as you see in this formula is that computing these derivatives of the cost function with respect to these weight values is again very, very complex because, you know, if you have a multi-layer ANN, you know, the expressions for these uh, derivatives can become very, very complicated. And that is precisely where backpropagation comes into the picture. So backpropagation is not a new or a different algorithm, but this backpropagation essentially gives a nice method to compute these derivatives very, very efficiently. So once again, the process of training your neural network requires gradient descent or you can use stochastic gradient descent and in order to implement this gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent you need to compute these derivatives of the cost function with respect to the weight values and this back propagation is essentially this method of computing these derivatives in an efficient manner. So backpropagation is not referring to the entire ANN training algorithm, but only to this process of computing the derivatives. Once these derivatives are computed, then you can use either the full gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent or some other, uh, you know, optimization method in order to update your weights. So now let's see how these derivatives are computed in an efficient manner by the backpropagation algorithm. So to give a brief recap of what we have done so far, so you have this ANN, which could be small in size, which could be large in size, it doesn't really matter, the algorithm works fine, exactly in all cases. So we have each node whose output is denoted by A, superscript L and subscript J, and which is given by this formula, sigma, and inside bracket, you have a sum over all the weight values and the outputs of the previous node. In order to simplify this formula, we denote the quantity inside the brackets as Z superscript L subscript J. So that is just the summation over the weight values and the outputs of the previous uh, layer nodes. And, and so this ALJ is simply sigma of the ZLJ values. And you have this cost function which you want to minimize. And the process of minimizing is that you keep updating your weight values uh, using this gradient descent formula till you reach the the appropriate weight values which minimize your c so here this eta is called the learning rate and this has to be chosen appropriately because if you take eta to be very high then you will keep jumping around your uh, you know uh, cost function landscape and you won't really reach anywhere and if your eta is very small then your learning process will be very very slow and it will take too much time so you need to choose an appropriate value of eta, which you can, uh, uh, you know, learn from 
experience. So now, as I mentioned, this backpropagation is essentially an algorithm for computing these derivatives of dou c by dou w l j k. So let's see how these derivatives are computed. So we have this expression dou c by dou w l j k. And so essentially the idea that we want to use is that instead of computing these derivatives independently for each single weight in the whole ANN network, what we want to do is that we want to go layer by layer. Like when we did our forward pass, we went from input layer to first layer to second layer to third layer and so on till we reached the output layer. We want to carry out a similar procedure so that we first do these derivatives for the output layer weights, then we go to the previous layer, then we go to the previous layer and then we go to the previous layer and so on. So essentially, we want to compute these derivatives for the weights associated with one layer and use these values to compute the derivatives for the weights associated with the previous layer. So this would give us a very very systematic procedure so that we can compute these derivatives easily without having to get into too many complications. So now in order to do this uh, you know layer by layer computation we just need to use the chain rule of calculus so that we can represent these uh, derivatives by using the uh, terms of the next layer. So now, uh, uh, so first thing that we do is that we first write this dou c by dou w l j k as dou c by dou z l j multiplied by dou z by dou w. And this is because taking a derivative of the cost function directly with respect to the weight values again becomes quite messy. However, as you can see very clearly, taking a derivative of these z values with respect to omega, with respect to w is very very straightforward because z is simply a linear function of w. So now if we use the expression for z over here and we take this derivative that simply gives us dou c by dou z l j multiplied by a superscript l minus 1 and subscript k. So this you can get by using the expression for z given above and just differentiating that with respect to w l j k. And now what we do is that we denote this dou c by dou z l j by this uh, symbol delta l j which is called the error function. So why this is called the error function is not very clear but for the time being we can accept this uh, you know uh, uh, name because that is the standard name which is used for this particular function. So we have taken this derivative of c with respect to the weight values and written that as a product of two derivatives by using the chain rule. So we have dou c by dou z l j multiplied by dou z l j divided by dou w l j k and dou z l j by dou w l j k is simply a superscript l minus 1 and subscript k and we denote this dou c by dou z l j as delta l j so this uh, our uh, derivative of cost function with respect to the weight simply becomes this simple expression uh, delta l subscript j multiplied by a superscript l minus 1 and subscript k. So now it is important to note that once we have done a forward pass of our ANN from input to output layer the values for the a are already available to us. So at each single node of the network we know what are the values of a subscript k and superscript l minus 1. So all that we need to do is to compute the values of this delta uh, symbol and once we have the values for this delta symbols computing the derivative of the cost function with respect to the weight values becomes very very straightforward. So now what we need to do is to develop a protocol to compute these delta values for layer L by using the delta values of layer L plus 1 so that we can go along a sequential process in the ANN. So in order to do that, 
let's start from this expression so we have delta lj which is equal to dou c by dou z lj which is our definition of the error function so now because we want to use the values of the next layer to compute the delta values of the previous layer we are again going to use chain rule and write this derivative in this format so now we wrote del c by del z lj as summation over all k del c by del z l plus 1 subscript k so l plus 1 means it is the z values of the next layer multiplied by dou z superscript l plus 1 subscript k divided by dou z l j so now we need to sum over all k because there are you know multiple nodes in each layer and the derivative has to be with respect to each node in that layer so this is a simple application of chain rule so now we have represented our derivative in terms of the values of the nodes of the next layer so now let's see what this becomes so now we already know that uh, our derivative of the cost function with respect to z is represented as this delta function so we can simply write dou c by dou z l plus 1 subscript k as delta superscript l plus 1 subscript k so this is just using our definition of the error function so now we have this uh, uh, function where we have the delta superscript l subscript j in terms of the delta of the layer l plus 1 and now our uh, uh, you know sole thing that remains to be done is to compute this derivative of the z values of l plus 1th layer with respect to the z values of the lth layer so let's see how that is done so by you simply by using the formula for the z uh, uh, you know values which is given to you on the to on top of your screen so you have z subscript k superscript l plus 1 is equal to summation over all m where m is some integer weight values l plus 1 sub, uh, subscript km multiplied by a superscript l and subscript m so now you can uh, you know write this in this form because we know that our a l m is nothing but sigma of z l m and now we need to take a derivative of the z of the l plus 1th layer with respect to the z of the previous layer so that is simply given as dou z superscript l plus 1 subscript k uh, derivative with respect to z superscript l subscript j is equal to omega l plus 1 kj times sigma prime where prime represents derivative with respect to the argument and inside you have z l j so this z of l plus 1th layer was a summation over many many terms but when you take a derivative with respect to a particular z of the previous layer only one term will remain because derivative with respect to a particular node of all the other nodes in that network will uh, in that layer will become zero because the output values of a particular layer do not depend on the output values of any other node in that same layer they depend on the output values of the previous layer so when we take a partial derivative with respect to the z of a particular node only that particular node will remain and everything else will become zero so now we can use this formula and simply substitute in our expression that we had derived earlier so now we get an expression for delta lj which is equal to summation over k delta superscript l plus 1 subscript k into w l plus 1 subscript kj times sigma prime of z lj so now you can see that now these uh, delta values of a particular layer depend only on the delta values of the next layer and now once we have computed these delta values computing the derivative of c with respect to the weight values is very very trivial because it is just multiplication of the delta values and the output values of the previous layer which is a superscript l minus 1 subscript k so using this back propagation algorithm 
Now we can compute these derivatives very very efficiently in a very very fast manner without getting into any kind of complications and this is what we use to implement the learning algorithm for ANN.